Season 22 of Destiny, aka Season of the Witch, just dropped about a week ago, and I've been looking into and messing around with a lot of different submachine guns in PvP, so I decided I want to make a video for you guys just explaining what are my top 5 SMGs for this season, and give some background on why I like these weapons, and hopefully all the information I provide will help you guys get a better idea on what weapons you should look for, so that you can be well equipped for Crucible, and have a great time in Trials of Osiris, Competitive, and whatever game mode you want to do, but you guys just gotta trust me, these weapons are all great, and also I'm only going to be covering Legendary SMGs. There's other great exotics you could use like Taraba, but I'm just going to be covering legendary SMGs today. And also all these submachine guns are obtainable. None of them are old. There's only one that I'm going to be talking about in this video, but it's going to be available later in the season. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, all these weapons are available now and you can farm them and grind them out right now. But yeah, if you enjoy this video anytime, make sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel for more future videos like this. And if you want me to cover other weapon types, PvP and PvE, let me know in the comments as well which one you want to see next. But yeah, let's hop straight into the list. So the first submachine gun I'm gonna be talking about today is the immortal of course we all know this submachine gun is very good i'm not going to spend too much time talking about it it's a primary strand submachine gun with an aggressive frame this submachine gun is definitely one of the most broken weapons that come out of trials of osiris recently this submachine gun has been quote unquote nerfed a couple times now and it's still just a menace in the crucible the rolls are just disgusting on it you can get range finder kill clip perpetual motion target lock it's just a demon even after bungie nerfed the immortal and took off 10 range from every immortal in the game you can still get an immortal up to about 70 range and if you get range finder on it it's basically 80 to 85 range and it's still crazy and immortal is really where the target lock meta started for some machine guns and ever since pvp has been pretty hectic yeah if you have trials and grams you want to throw away and try to get a good roll head over to same 14 drop them all off and try to get a perfect roll on it the best roll i can really suggest for you is either target lock or kill clip with range finder perpetual motion maybe even dynamic sway with ricochet rounds i would usually choose and barrel is really your choice but, but honestly either hammer forge or small bores what i like to run in my opinion but yeah let's move on to the next weapon Next on the list, we have my baby, my bread and butter, Shire's Wrath. This is my favorite submachine gun all time. I love this thing. It's my favorite weapon to use. It's a void submachine gun that goes in the energy slot, and it's a precision frame, which means the recoil is super easy to control. It's another Trials of Osiris weapon. Honestly, I prefer it over Immortal. This weapon is disgusting. The amount of range you can get out of this thing should be illegal. There is a row with the Shire's Wrath that can literally get you up to 94 range. With the adept version which is disgusting obviously you don't need that much range you probably want a little bit more stability but just that's insane 94 range this thing also hits like a truck and it's super easy to control it has really nice recoil especially for controller i highly recommend using all your trials and grams on this one if you want a nice feeling submachine gun it's been around for a long time and it's always been consistent the rolls you can get are also pretty nice on it I always love picking up Kill Clip, Perpetual, that's a good roll with Accurized, and whatever barrel you like. I myself have one with 87 range, and it is my favorite thing to use. It feels like an auto rifle. It's crazy. Season 22, I've been seeing a lot of people run it, so I would definitely pick it up. I believe as long as you've gotten this weapon before in previous seasons, you're able to use your engrams now in the older engram decoding section. But I'm not too sure on that. I'm not sure if everyone can or you've had to had the weapon before. But yeah, I would definitely head over there and see if you've got some extra engrams to throw into this weapon. And if you hate Trials of Osiris, then it's your lucky day because Destiny was nice and decided to release Shire's Wrath 2.0, the Unending Tempest. I already made a video on this weapon, but I'm going to say it again. This weapon is disgusting. Also, it is a Shire's Wrath, but it's a primary slot weapon and it's stasis, which is amazing for me. I've been looking for more primary slot weapons and this one was perfect timing for me. I saw this, the, my first game of Crucible back from the new season, and I was just like, bro, they really reskinned it. And it's honestly has some better perks. You can also get this one to 88 range if you get the perfect roll. The stability will be a little low once again. Honestly, 88 range is probably a little too much. But yeah, you can get basically the same range as Shira's Wrath. The recoil is a little different on this one, but it still shreds. And guess what? The perks you can get on it are also really good, but there's a lot of selections and it might take a while to get that perfect roll. But you can get range finder, target lock, match it up with something like perpetual, dynamic sway, even discord. It's really up to you, of course, or whatever roll you get, you might just have to deal with it. But yeah, very worth running this. I've been seeing so many people using it and it shreds. If you get the perfect roll on this thing, it is so worth using. Definitely one of the top submachine guns for season 22. I would definitely use all your engrams and farm out crucible as much as possible to get as many rolls on this as possible. It's a really fun and really smooth feeling submachine gun 
I've been using it ever since it came out, and I have no complaints about it. But yeah, let's move on to the next weapon on the list. So the next submachine I'm talking about is one of the more slept on submachine guns, honestly. It's called the Funnel Web. It's a Void Energy Slot SMG, and it's a lightweight frame. It's a really nice fling SMG, but I really don't see that many people using it. They're also kind of annoying to get. They're just random world drops, and there's so many different things you can get from random world drops. It's really hard to get this. With the correct rules, this can be a very fun SMG. It's a 900 round per minute, it shoots very fast, and it honestly can beam. It can get up to 74 range with the right roll, plus range finder, which means you're basically getting around like 80 to 85 range, which is insane for how fast it shoots. The time to kill is crazy on this thing. I've outgunned a lot of different submachine guns with this one, and I don't see many people using it, but I definitely think this can be a great contender in Season 22, especially since it can get some pretty good rolls like Range Finder, Perpetual Motion, Accurized Rounds, and also with Perpetual Motion, the trait, you, you get bonus stability and handling, which will help you a lot also. You always want that in submachine guns. But yeah, it's been a really nice feeling submachine gun for me for a while now. I rarely see them, but when I do, I always get dropped by them. I kind of feel like not many people use them because of how rare they are. But if you happen to get one as random roll drop, I would definitely keep it. Look at the roll. If it's good, throw in the vault, use it, whatever you want to do. Definitely look out for funnel web in this next season. I want to throw in a little bonus weapon. I don't have this weapon yet, but I get destroyed by it all the time. I happen to be away during the season it came out. But the Aikido's SMG, the craftable submachine gun, it's very good. It's an aggressive frame and it's an arc energy weapon. You can craft a roll like range finder, perpetual motion, and also enhance the traits, which just makes it even better. This weapon is coming out later in the season. They're just gonna be farmable. If you wanna be like me, I actually saved all my deep set harmonizers. And as soon as I get five of them, I'm gonna use all my deep sights and craft that weapon right away. Because I've gotten destroyed by it so many times, I want to try it out myself so I can get some payback on these people. But yeah, Aikido's SMG, super good weapon. As soon as it's back in rotation, you're going to see so many people using it. So make sure to get your hands on it. And the last submachine I want to talk about is one of my favorite from the recent season. It's called the Rapacious Appetite. It's a stasis aggressive frame submachine gun that goes into the primary slot. And you can craft it and get some pretty good rolls on it. It's from last season AK, season 21. And you can get something like Target Lock Enhanced. Perpetual motion enhanced with ricochet, and it just feels really nice. The only thing about this submachine gun is it's actually a submachine gun. Like, you have to be really close to people to get the optimal TTK. But once you are in range, it's really easy to drop people. I outgun Immortal, Shiras, anything if I'm close range. It has really low stability, but if you're decent with controller, you can make up for it. And the weapon just shreds people. But yeah, you can go to the helm, get some of these, get a red border every week, and get this craft yourself if you want to try it out. I think personally, I like this weapon a lot because it reminds me of the multi mock. If you don't know what that was, it's the old Iron Banner submachine gun that was really strong, but they discontinued it. Hopefully, they bring it back soon. But yeah, it hasn't been in the game for a while now. This one feels kind of just like it. The range is a little less, but, but it basically feels the same to me, so that's why I enjoy it. Well, yeah, guys, that brings us to the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my opinion on the best submachine guns for this season for PvP. If you enjoy videos like this, please feel free to leave a like and a comment letting me know. Until next time, my name is Epoxy. Peace.